Do you know the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey? Of course, yes. <laughs> uh, well, you must be too young to have seen that when it came out, obviously. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing still... it when it came out. It's... You saw it when it came out? Yeah, saw... yeah, 50 60, years ago. Mm-hmm. 60, when mm-hmm. was it? 60, yeah. Uh... It was... In the 60s. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And still a classic. Mm. Uh, it's, mm. it's still probably, and, and, for uh, me, uh, the uh, greatest uh, AI movie ever made. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, one of the great space movies ever yes, made. Yes, So, well, let me ask you a philosophical question since we're talking about robots exploring space. Do you think HAL 9000 is good or bad? So for people who haven't watched, mm-hmm. yeah. this computer it's system over. makes a decision to uh, basically prioritize the mission that it, it, the ship is on over the humans that are part mm-hmm. yes. of the mission. Um, do you think HAL is good or evil? If you ask me, probably in that context, it was probably good, but I think you're raising what is, of course, very much uh, active issue in everyday life uh, about uh, the extent to which we should um, entrust any important decision uh, to a machine. And, and there again, I'm very worried because I, I think um, if you are recommended for an operation or not given parole from prison or even denied credit by your bank, you feel you should be entitled to an explanation. It's not enough to be told that the machine has a more reliable record um, on the whole than humans have of making these decisions. You think you should be given reasons you could understand. And and that's why I think uh, the present societal trend to um, uh, take away the humans and uh, leave us um, in the hands of decisions that uh, we can't contest uh, is a very dangerous one. I think we've got to be, be very careful of the extent to which AI, which can handle lots of information, actually makes the decisions without oversight. And I think uh, um, we, we can use them as a supplement, but to take the case of um, uh, uh, radiology and cancer. Um, I mean, it's true that the radiologist hasn't seen as many uh, uh, x-rays of cancer lungs as the machine, so the machine can certainly help, but you want the human to make the final decision. And I think that's true in most of, of these instances. But if we turn a bit to the short term, concerns with uh, robotics. I think the, the big worry, of course, is the uh, effect it has on um, people's self-respect and their labor market. And I think um, uh, m- my solution would be that we should um, arrange to tax more heavily the big international conglomerates which uh, use the robots um, and um, use that tax to uh, uh, fund decently paid, dignified posts of the kind where being a human being is important. Above all, carers for old people, teachers' assistants for young, gardeners in public parks, and things like that. And if the people who are now working in mind-numbing jobs in Amazon warehouses uh, or in telephone call centers are automated, but those same people are given jobs where being a human is an asset, um, then that's a plus-plus situation. And so that's the way I think that we should uh, benefit from these these technologies, um, uh, take over the mind-numbing jobs, um, and uh, you use machines to make them more efficient, but um, uh, enable um, the people so displaced to do jobs where we do want a human being. I mean, most people, when they're, when they're old, um, the rich people, if they have the choice, they want human carers and all that, don't they? They may want to have robots to help with some things, empty the bedpans and things like that. But but for, but they they want real people, and uh, uh, and, and certainly in this country, and I think even worse in America, um, the, the the care of old people is completely inadequate, and it needs just more human beings to uh, help them cope with everyday life and look after them when they're sick, and um, uh, and so. Um, that seems to me the way in which the money raised in tax from these big companies should be deployed. So that's in the short term. But if you actually just look, the fact is where we are today to long-term future in 100 years, it yeah. does seem that there is some significant chance 
that the human species is coming to an end in its pure biological form. There's going to be greater and greater integration through genetic modification than uh, uh, cyborg type of creatures. And so you have to think, all right, well, we're going to have to get from here to there. Yeah, yeah. And that process is going to be painful. And uh, that, you know, how there's so many different trajectories that take us from one place to another. It, it does seem that we need to deeply respect humanness and humanity, basic human rights, human welfare, like happiness and all that kind of stuff. No, absolutely. And, and that's why I think we ought to try and slow down the application of these human enhancement techniques and cyborg techniques for humans for just that reason. I mean, uh, and, and that, that's why I want to lead into the people on Mars. Let them do it. But, but, uh, but you, you have a, for just that reason. But they're people too. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> people yeah, on yeah. Mars are people too. Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to, you know. But they, they are very poorly adapted to where they are. Right. So that's why they need modification, whereas we're adapted to to the earth quite well. So we don't need these modifications. We're we're happy to be humans living in in the environment where our ancestors lived. So we don't have the same same motives. So I think there's a difference. But I agree. We we don't want uh, drastic changes probably in in our, our lifestyle. Um, and uh, that indeed is a worry because some things are changing so fast. Um, but I think um, I'd like to inject a, a note of caution. Um, if you think of the way uh, progress in one technology goes, um, it goes in a sort of spurt. It goes up very fast and then it levels off. Um, let me give you two examples. Well, the one we've had already, a human space flight. Um, at the time of the Apollo program, which was only 12 years after um, Sputnik 1, um, I, I was alive then and I thought it would only be 10 or 20 years further before there were footprints on Mars. Mm -hmm. But as we know, for reasons we could all understand, um, uh, that was and still remains the high point of human space exploration. Um, for, for, and that's because it was funded for reasons of superpower rivalry at huge public expense. Um, but uh, let me give you an, another case, um, civil aviation. Um, if you think of the change between uh, 1919, when that was Alcock and Brown's first transatlantic flight, to 1979, the first flight of the jumbo jet, it was a big change. But it's more than 50 years since 1969, and we still have jumbo jets more or less the same. So that's an example of something which developed fast and changed over. And to take another analogy, um, uh, we've had huge developments in uh, mobile phones, but uh, I suspect the iPhone, the iPhone 24 may not be too different from the iPhone 13. Um, because you know, they, they uh, develop, but then they saturate, and then maybe some new innovation takes over in stimulating economic growth. Yeah, so it's that uh, we have to be cautious about being too optimistic, and we have to be cautious about being too cynical. I think that is well, the... Optimistic is begging the question. I mean, do, do we want this rapid, very rapid change? Right. So first of all, there's some degree to which technological advancement is, is something, is a force that can't be stopped. And so the question is about directing it versus stopping it or well, slowing it. Well, it can be sort of slopped or st slow. We'll take human spaceflight. There could be, have been uh, footprints on Mars if, um, if America had gone on spending 4% of the federal budget on the project after... Yes, Apollo. So but the reason didn't. so it's, uh, there were very good reasons. But um, uh, and we could we could have had supersonic flight, but Concorde came and went during the fifty years. During which but the, the reason yet. it didn't progress is yeah. not because we realize it's not good for human society. The reason it didn't progress is because it it couldn't make uh, sort of from a capitalist perspective, it couldn't make. Uh, there, there was no short-term or long-term way for it to make money. So for me, but isn't but that's the same as saying it's not good for society. I don't think everything that makes money is good for society, and everything that doesn't make money is bad for society. Right? That's a that's a difficult that's a difficult thing we're always contending with when we look at social networks. It's not obvious, even though they make a tremendous amount of money, that they're good for society especially how they're currently implemented with advertisement and engagement maximization. Mm -hmm. So that's the constant struggle of- Oh, you um, know, I, I agree with you that many that's innovations us. are damaging. Yes, yeah, mm. yes. Uh, well, 
but I would have thought that supersonic flight was uh, something that would benefit only a tiny elite, sure. uh, a huge yes. expense and environmental damage. That was obviously something which they're very glad not to have, in my opinion. Yeah, but perhaps there was a way to do it where it could benefit the general populace. If you were to think about airplanes, wouldn't you think that in the early days, airplanes would have been seen as something that can surely only benefit 1% at most of the population, as opposed to a much larger percentage? There, there's there's another aspect of capitalist system that's able to drive down costs once you get the thing kind of going. So, the, the, you know, we get together maybe with taxpayer money and get the thing going at first. And once it gets going, companies step up and tr drive down the cost and actually mm. make it so that uh, blue yeah. collar folks can actually start using the stuff. Yeah, sometimes actually, that does happen. That's good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's that's again, the, the double-edged sword of uh, human civilization that, some technology hurts us, some benefits us, and we don't know ahead of time. We can just do our best. And, yes. and There's be a gap between what could be done and what we collectively decide to do. Yes. In the, in the term, we could push forward some developments um, faster than we do.